team to be unequivocally better, and they just rank them how they see fit, and that those things you just saw are used to separate teams that are close. It's just what he thinks. So let's see what the rankings are. We have the top six in now. Rather die with my brothers. Face only me left alive, I'm a suffer. Bury me deep, I'm still standing above and I'm hearing the screams when the ones is before me. Now you just tell me we'll fight till we conquer. The price of the victory is part of the process. Part of my energy, part of me lives in the game and again at the start, so I'll probably never leave. Exert on fixie, I'm already in motion, yeah. Unbelievable! Look at this scene! Cincinnati fans who can't believe what they have witnessed in 2021. Salute! Number four. The Bearcats of Cincinnati. Oh, official! I said, can you hear that celebration coming out of Cincinnati? Oh, I just stayed in. The skyline chili is suddenly a little sweeter. We're setting out to do what no team has ever done outside of the Power Five to qualify for a four team playoff. And I know that's a lofty goal, but you need five things to happen at the same time to have a chance. Number one, you've got to be great the year before so that you begin the season in or close to the top 10, check. You need to have a great quarterback coming back, check. You need to hold on to a great head coach, check. You need to have great non-conference games that impress people around the country, Indiana and Notre Dame, check. And you have to go undefeated. That's the hard part. Zero losses. Zero doubts. Bearcats send a message to the college football world. Did you see that? Test one, two, three. Honestly, I honestly didn't realize it was coming on that day until we had like our senior banquet and it was just on the TV. But, you know, I honestly never doubted upon the team. You know, this is what we work for from day one. Like I have the utmost confidence in us. So just to see us up there, I wasn't surprised or shocked. My immediate thought was it's time to go back to work. I honestly didn't know. I was at home and then people started calling me about it. It was like, oh, you know, you're in the playoffs? I was like, no, I didn't know. And um, I was actually getting a waffle um during that time so you know it, i i'd heard all the the parents and some of the other players you know cheering on the during the, the ceremony but um you know my initial reaction was you know excited that we got to be in there and got to you know be selected for the playoffs um like i said earlier i just felt you know we're just excited that we get to play another game on a big stage uh, it was a great moment you know considering the fact you know, as the season was going on, we was trying not to think about the playoffs and anything in the future. So we finally had won the championship and got a chance to actually see it. You know, it was a blessing. You know, I was with my family. You know, we just turned up seeing that. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're any kind of a college football fan, you've, you've clearly taken notice now. What I think will be interesting in, you know, for the playoff and for the days leading up to that game is all the people who are not you know, college football fans who just tune in because that's what you do for, for the playoff and on New Year's Eve, seeing them come to realize what Cincinnati has built. You know, I certainly hope there's like another wave of the, the, the more casual fan understanding how impressive it is that Cincinnati ha has been able to get to this point and everything that 
Luke Fickle and the program have done over the past five years to, to build up to this level because I, I really don't think you can oversell or overhype how impressive it is. Uh, it's just another great opportunity to you know, show the world what we're able to do. Um, same with me personally, just another opportunity, bigger stage to show everybody what, um, what we've been doing all season. You know, we just don't do it just for the name on the front or the back. You know, we do it for the whole city of Cincinnati. You know, just to have them in our corner, you know, cheering for us is definitely a blessing, you know. Uh, we have a, a strong brotherhood, and I feel like that's why we made it very far this season. I feel like we got stronger and stronger. The brotherhood has got uh, stronger. And uh, it's not just like an individual thing or a position thing. Like, I could talk to a receiver about personal things, vice versa, or this. So it's just like we all a brotherhood. Uh, just pretty much like that brotherhood you talked about, just keeping our circle small, you know, like staying away from even if it's family members, friends, you know, fans. Like we just try to drown it out, not just be around our circle to try to avoid the outside noise. I mean, everybody entitled to their own opinion. You know, uh, the stats show or they don't show, you know, so that just speaks for itself. Yeah, I don't Absolutely. really got nothing. I don't got nothing to say about that for real, you know. Just the same way that we've been handling it throughout the entire season, which is taking it day by day and week by week. Well, no, I think that uh, we weren't overly worried about, you know, what other people, we tried not to be overly worried about what other people would think on, regardless of what your strength of schedule would be. You know, we, we have what we have and we knew we were going to play what we were going to play, but you know, what we could control was our ability to play well. And uh, even though we had a lull in that in the in, in the middle of the year there, I don't think we played as well. I mean, the thing we did a good job of is not trying to overdo it, listening to the outside of telling us how we needed to play. And, um, you know, we did get people's best shots and we got a lot of different stuff from people just based on, you know, probably what they thought they had to do going into our game. Uh, but nonetheless, I think in the long run, it really made us better. And so to see them be able to fight through that and kind of rise to the occasion when they had to, whether it was going on the road at, at Notre Dame or, or pulling out those those tough games late in the season. And then obviously, you know, when they really needed to play their best against SMU at home, against Houston in the title game, they were able to do that. You know, the people, the Cincinnati fans and the people around, they always believed in us that we can do special things, but the people on the outside world never thought, you know, that this could happen. So that's why we're going into this game as the underdog and I'm looking uh, very forward to it. Um, you know, it's just a huge opportunity for us to go out and show the, the nation that we can play with the best of the best. Um, when we talk about Alabama, and Alabama says they're the, the golden standard of college football and obviously have been, you know, a top program throughout all the years. Um, so when we know that we want to go and try to be the best, we have to play the best. Um, so I think it's kind of fitting that we have to play Alabama. <laughs> Go, jog it down, jog it down, jog it down, jog it down. Let's go. Jog it down, jog it down, jog it down. That's what I'm talking about. It's better. That's it. That's it. Just one step. You gotta take his ass. Come on, man. Get him a drink. Hold him up. Get a drink. Get a drink. Get a drink. Up, 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 up. So you can go with one play. who you got, okay, stay together. And all we do, nothing's gonna change, guys. All right, I don't give a crap who the other guy across, who whatever the, the emblem is and all that different stuff, nothing changes, be us. Maybe someone is better than me, better than me or not. 
But I go out there with my mentality that no one can um, stop me and that I can't be stopped. So then I try to pass that on to others. So that was after the Ohio game, your freshman year. Where did that like leadership come from? Like, how is that so natural, and how have you developed that over your time in the team? Um. I don't know, maybe it's just always been from being the biggest and, I mean, being the, the best at all the sports I had played way back when. Um, but, you know, I, I you know, wasn't taking anything from anyone. And um, I, I just kind of knew that, you know, I had to, I had to bring that here. And I kind of saw that um, in my redshirt year, so my true freshman year, um, you know, when I was out there in scout team and, and you know, the, the defense is kind of picking on me, this and that, and always, you know, getting a, an extra shot at me here and there that, you know, I knew that, you know, if, if something was going to change and you were going to go out and, and play your best ball, you know, it was going to have to be taken to another level. And, um, you know, you couldn't let, you couldn't go out there and just, you know, automatically think someone's going to be better than you because if you do that, you're already a step below. So I don't know why anyone would, you know, play a sport or play anything competitive, you know, going into a game thinking that, you know, they're going to lose or, or that, you know, someone's better than them. <laughs> Cause Vinny Devin came the wrong way. Who? Sure. Who are you? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I don't want to keep. Hey, Coach Perry. Yes, sir. Why are you so over there like that? Hey, man. Your legacy. All you've worked for. Your leadership. You just made history. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you just made history. You made history. First ever. First ever. First ever. Jim Thorpe Award winner. Yes, sir. First ever. Oh, man. <laughs> you said you wanted to Proud of you. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. I didn't want you to be surprised by yeah. him running off. Not yet. So. He caught me on it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. That. That. Oh, congrats, man. Give me what you got. How you feeling about the Bearcats this year? Well, I used to hoist this guy. This is my son. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, how old are you now? 23. 23. I've been going I used... since I was probably four or five. Uh, I've, been, I've made it to all, all the home games so far. I've, I've been a UC fan my whole life. I'm not missing this game. So. Dallas. You know, ranks right up there with the 92 Final Four team. Basketball. Ranks right there. Because it's, I mean, we broke through. We did something that nobody's ever done. You yeah. see forever. Yep. Cats by 90, baby. Cats by 90 always, so. You in October? In October, yeah, because we knew it was going to happen. December 31st, Texas, Combo. Look out for my man Jake. He's going to be did, there. They didn't Cincy. think we'd be there. But we're there. Yeah, so every week, and I think, you know, every single home game that we've had here has been sold out this year. is just a huge testament to you know all the fans throughout the whole city throughout the whole state um, and you know we wouldn't be here without them because you know they keep us going you know the light show at, at the last game they get real loud I just I, I mean personally I love it I think all year was unbelievable and um, you know I, I don't get out in the community but I could just you could just sense and feel the buzz not just on our campus but throughout the entire community and city uh, and then to me the combination of all that stuff is the championship game and uh, to see that scene after the game what that field looked like and felt like third down I could like my ears were like ringing I'm like I've never heard Nip ever like this but just to look up and see everyone supporting us and being in our corner and then though they're, they're storming the field after it was just a surreal moment it was it's a moment I'll never forget so you know, it was so important. There was so much on the line in that game. I knew it was going to be a good crowd. I had no idea it was going to be that good. It was absolutely electric. 
Um, it certainly helped us win that game. Uh, the crowd's been great all year. The student section's been great all year, but they took it to a level for that one, and it was just a celebration. It felt like a celebration the entire game. Having our fans here and knowing that our fans have our back no matter what happens, um, it just makes our lives a whole lot easier, and it, it makes the game go by a lot easier um, because, you know, this is a game of momentum, and you know, our fans do a good job of keeping us in that momentum. It's a blessing. I feel like they helped us get where we are today. So, you know, is when I'm sitting on the sideline, I'm able to kind of sit back and, and listen to the fans go crazy on third downs and things like that. Um, but no, definitely our fans kept us in that game. Um, and, you know, we were just able to use our fans' momentum and, and the craziness that they brought. Um, and, you know, it obviously made it hard on Houston for sure. I think the, the team's message and my message would be the same, which is just a big thank you. You know, we needed it this year. Um, we needed the support week in and week out. I mean, Nippert was just electric all year. You know, day in and day out, and to just know that we get to come into Nippert and, you know, run out onto the field and it'd be just an absolutely packed stadium and the fans go crazy and they play pump it up and everyone's juiced and fired up. Um, it's, it's really a feeling like no other. Speaking of fans, um, a lot of the fan base and some of the guys on the team have latched onto this pump it up song. Are you, are you aware of that? <laughs> Don't you know, pump it up. Kyle Bolden had, had introduced that to us, you know, around spring ball, around camp, um, and it kind of got us going. And you know, uh, I know Royer is Ryan Royer is our big juice guy on the team. We can thank uh, a crew of our guys. I think maybe uh, Ryan Royer might be one of the, the leaders that kind of gets that thing going, and it, uh, it shows up at time to time within our practices as well. Started with this guy. Yeah. This guy's the originator. So. I always just liked EDM music when I got to college and started playing it and, uh, you know, within our friend group and it kind of took over that and, you know, Coach Brady asked me to come DJ some some workouts and I, I had it in the playlist and then he fell in love with it and, and then we started playing at practice and then uh, it's worked its way to the kickoff song and now it's in every bar in Cincinnati and it's the anthem of our team. And you know, the marketing people were talking to me and I was like, you know what, you gotta change the kickoff song to pump it up because it gets our guys going. You know, you just see the full energy and full craziness of, of what it does to everyone on Saturdays. I, honestly, I'm so like locked in. I honestly don't pay attention to it until like it's like a time out or something. I'm like, then I look around, I see everybody, you know, doing the dance. I'm like, okay, I get to doing a little dance, kind of, but you know, it's to where nobody can see me really for real, so. And so then it reaching football, and now like you see all the athletics playing it, and you see all the people going crazy for it uh, on kickoff and stuff. It's it's super fun, and you know it's just something exciting, a great memory to have to look back on. 100. percent I mean, I think it it is something that um, for how special this season is, and then to have like a song to go along with that. I think it's funny. Some we did in the weight room that they brought out to practice that they put into the game. My kids are obsessed with it. So when I'm home, my little two and a half year old son crew. He'll go, Alexa, play Pump It Up by Endor. I don't really get turned up by that song, but I see that everybody in Cincinnati likes it, you know, so I just jump up and down with it too, so. So obviously a bunch of schools are imitating what we've started, but uh, it definitely starts from Kyle Bolden's uh, guest DJ appearance. They can try, but they'll never be us. They'll never be the kings, the yeah. originators. No, yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool though, but it's like uh, imitation is the sincerest form of uh, flattery. <laughs> Right? They're jealous. And they're all just jealous. So <laughs> to me, just it's special because it's something like I feel like I started or at least whatever. And then it's like the ownership. Yeah, it's, it's just like, like the pride. Yeah, yeah, the pride that is involved with it. Good so job, man. thanks, buddy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I always remember it.
who that is. That's Frozone. <laughs> <laughs> I have no other shows. You ever seen uh, Incredibles? Incredibles? Yeah. <laughs> where's my soup? Where's my super suit? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, tell him on ESPN that to call him Frozone. <laughs> call him Frozone. Tell him I said to call him Frozone. Yeah. Do not tell him that. Yeah, that's an old one. Look at the helmet. Jay, can you stick with the visor? How old was Coach Gino when he got put up on the ring? Stick with it, bro. It makes your matting rating go from like a 78 to like 89. I'm gonna break all his records too. So like even back in 2018, you're just about breaking Coach Gino's record. Like, is that something that like you had on your radar from the very beginning? Like, that was a mission that you're gonna, you know, be that type of player here. Or like, when did that transition happen? Like, when did you think that might actually be a thing you could do? Yeah, no. So, um, you know, coming in, Coach Gino, he was uh, the running backs coach at the time, and Coach Denbrock was our our quarterback coach and um, you know I was I was a true freshman so I wasn't wasn't playing at all and, and Hayden was playing and um, but but even before that you know I, on you know some of my recruiting stuff and, and coming in you know I sat down with with Coach Fig and Coach Denbrock and you know I told them you know I, I, I wanted to be the best that's ever came through Cincinnati I wanted to be you know uh, at the time I, I told them you know I want to be the first quarterback to to go on uh, the the Gruden show and. And uh, do all that, and, and and be one of the best that came through Cincinnati, and go play in the NFL for a long time. So you know, at the, I mean, it's been like that from the from the start. And then, you know, obviously the relationship that me and Coach Gino have had and have grown on over the years, it just kind of makes it you know more funny and you know more of a, a friendly competition, so to say. Um, so obviously, yeah, now to look back on this, it, it's pretty funny. But no, that's always been my mindset: is always to be the best, because. You know, just like I said last time, if, why would you do something and not try to be the best at it? Yes, bro, chill. Cause, Cause this will be tripping. Bro, this is actually my first time. Last uh, excuse. Bro. But you just talking about you was gonna dub me or like? Oh my goodness. Wow. That boy just got baited. Oh yeah! Oh, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. What? Oh, Daddy! Oh my goodness! Oh, he gone! Man, stop oh, he gone, it. man! Stop it! Yeah, that's that's my little brother, man. I love him to death. It's like I'll do anything for him, you know. I'll go to war for him, you know. Just just from him being here from day one. I remember when he first got here. He a great leader, you know. It's just we be around each other so much. You know, uh, we motivate each other, so it's just like, it just feel like we got a longer history than we are, than what it actually is. You know, I feel like I've been around him since I was younger, you know, like, he's he like an older brother to me. Um, but, you know, those two are two of the best corners in, in college football and two of the best defense players in all of college football. Yeah, best cornerback duo in the country, right? Like, it's, it's kind of uh, indisputable at this point. That whole unit in general is when you've got competition like that, when you've got guys that you know, are different. I mean, where Kobe is a very serious, locked in competitor at all times, where Ahmad is a little bit more of a guy that's got a, you know, maybe a little looser and, and you know, does things a little bit different, but is a competitor in, in, in itself. Yeah, but it's like more of a brother competition. You know, we make plays, and we make plays, we great job, brother. Like, we always competing, though, but at the same time, who could get more interception? Who could get more PBUs? You know, and uh, he, he, he's special. You know, I knew he was special from day one. You know, he, he's driven. He's extremely competitive. He's confident. That's what I. That's what 
the first thing that always caught my eyes is how confident he was. You know, he never lacked confidence. Like before I get in my stands, I look in his eyes, like I look at him like I'm about to dominate. You know, that's what I'm thinking. Special, he's, he already is special. Everything he's got is just a blessing to be a part of. That pick six that he got, that was his first career pick six. You know, I was so turned, it felt like I got my first one. I remember, I remember the feeling when I got my first one versus UCF. I felt the same way when he got his, you know, and, and it was against UCF, so that was crazy. And then I took off, I'm like, nobody's catching me, so. I actually wasn't even tired when I got to the end zone like I thought I was going to be, so I'm like, okay. And then I realized I had to go back on defense. So. Uh, a, a lot of good decisions in this program the past couple of years, but Kobe kind of betting on himself to come back uh, looks like one of the, the smartest ones considering he won the Thorpe Award, you know, became a first-team All-American and has helped lead the team to the playoff. Well, you know, off the field, there, there are two goofballs. Um, you know, they're, they're just clowning and joking and always laughing, dancing and singing. Um, and, and they're really, you know, part of the energy of the team. We be on a game, playing Call of Duty, it be all types of stuff. We be on the phone, chopping it up. The biggest thing for me, you know, just to be the best example, you know, not just for, you know, the defense or the corners, but, you know, just for being an example for guys back in my high school and younger kids at that, you know. You know, it's a lot of people, like hundreds, thousands, so many people that came up to me, like, since I've been here, like pictures, autographs, everything. I never told any of them no. You know, so they remember me as a good person, you know, a good-hearted young man. Uh, you know, I always go back to Kobe Bryant. You know, he's, he was a, a, a leader for his team and for others as well. You know, that's just really the, the biggest thing. You know, it's not it's bigger than football. I, I don't know that I've ever been around or on a team that's had four guys uh, be recognized as academic All-Americans, first or second team. Uh, obviously, we had two first-team academic All-Americans and two second team. Uh, but I think it's a great correlation to what we expect. And you know, we talk about it all the time, about guys playing above their God-given ability and their talent levels, and not just playing and performing, but you know, also how they handle their business. And I think it's a great reflection of what those guys recognize as important um, and all that they It's just been one of those really special years. It's a senior-led team for sure, and you can feel that. The culture's great within the program, and that always comes through when you have people that are doing the right things on the field and in the classroom. Um, so just really, really proud. There was a lot of pressure on this team to have to go out every week and perform, and they did it, 13-0. and uh, And then to see the grades that came through during a year in which they're, they're under a lot of pressure on the field was really, really special. So very proud, uh, and, the, and the culture's been great. Uh, it means a lot um, just to show that like it's just not about football. Um, education and life after football was always important to me and my family. So graduating mean, meant a lot. cliche but I mean your ceiling is only what you allow it to be and we're very fortunate that you never know I mean you never know exactly what you've got um, but I think what we're seeing and feeling right now is obviously we've got a really good football team um, a great football team to be honest with you it's only fitting that for Cincinnati to get to this point to make this Cinderella underdog run and get to the playoff like it just it makes sense that they have to face Alabama when they get there compete and execute nobody you know, nobody can beat it, so that's the biggest thing. That's where it's going to be, and we love being in the spotlight, being able to make plays. The game is important, of course, but, you know, we're going to continue to do what we do. Like, whether we win by half a point, a point, whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as we get the win, that's, that's what we're going out there to do. I'll go back to 
um, our, our senior banquet that we had and, and Coach Gino was sitting down with my parents and myself and you know he looked at me and he just told me he was like you know this is why you came back. Uh, you, you came back for a reason to, to check all these boxes off and you know we've done that. Yeah the outside world's gonna say oh you know great season but you have no chance in this game and that's fine. We've, we've not listened to one thing anybody said all year. And again, that goes back to what Coach Fix said, just be us, because who you are is great enough, and it's why we've gotten to where we are. And, you know, I think we're definitely going to have a chip on our shoulders. Our kids always have a chip on their shoulders. We never need a validation from anybody outside of this building, outside of the, you know, city of Cincinnati. You know, other people's opinion doesn't define who we are. Same, same chip, uh, just try not to get the feeling like we, we arrived or that we made it. Uh, we still got work to do. But I think they've also proven, whether it was in the Peach Bowl last year, against Notre Dame and South Bend, if they play as good as they're capable of playing, they, they can hang with anyone. Our guys are always going to work, they're always going to compete, that's just who they are. Your ability to enjoy it a little bit so that you can play your best, I think is still the key to what it is we're doing. It's going to continue to grow, the attention's going to grow, um, but we can't lose sight of who we are and what's gotten us here. And uh, if we can enjoy it and find ways to you know, do what we do and still have a chance to relax, on the 31st we'll play our best ball. Tune in. So all I gotta say is just tune in and you'll see. My future, you fly through. Yeah. I'm from the nanny when we want it baby. Until we get it, we ain't gonna be heavy. We could be ratchet, but we keep it crazy. They try and hit to on sentence to Eddie. Yeah, we bring the city out. Ain't no one on our team we forget about. Gotta go up and get it, can't sit around. Got a fans going crazy, it's getting loud. He did it hit, we get it lit. We don't care who the start on as we win. Trip at a trip, we get it in. Just feel like what we ain't here to make friends. We going hard. You see on my jersey, yeah, I know they hear me, it's all hustle, it ain't ever love yeah. I'm from the nanny, but we want it, baby Until we get it, we ain't gon' be heavy We could be ratchet, but we keep it crazy They try and hit, tell them send us to 80, yeah We bring the city out, ain't no one on our team we forget about